Welcome back. Well, Jill, you know, after 50 years, as we've seen, there have been so many people who have had an impact on the history of Jet 24. Oh, that's for sure. It's incredible how many either started here and moved on to bigger markets or decided to work their entire careers here as well. We'll meet some of those people in our final decade of celebrating 50 years of Jet 24. Two thousand seven, a big year for Erie County and a moneymaker too. Summit Township hit the jackpot February twenty eighth when Presque Isle Downs and Casino opened its doors. Jet twenty four was there live. After years of development, opening day brought wagers close to nine million dollars. The casino got even more attention September first when live thoroughbred horse racing began. Jet 24's David Belmondo remembers casino. the excitement. A casino came to town before they had to go out in Niagara Falls or wherever, Atlantic City. Now we had a casino with 2,000 slot machines right here in Erie. Now, nearly a decade later, Erie County and its residents continue to reap huge benefits. While the city of Erie didn't land the casino, it's home to another large venue for visitors. The highly anticipated Bayfront Convention Center opened in August. The convention center held several events that year and continues to bring in out-of-town conventions, visitors, and millions of dollars to the region. Just a few years after Jet 24 Vice President and General Manager John Kansas retired from the TV industry, he was diagnosed with leukemia. The invasive treatments he received inspired him to look into alternatives, motivated by the children all around him in the hospital enduring the same treatments for their disease. The Kansas Radio Wave Cancer Treatment was born. This is truly non-invasive and the only real side effect might be a cure. In 2008, the Kansas Cancer Research Foundation was established to support the ongoing research of the cancer treatment. Every single test proves the same results, consistency, and um, that's, that's, that's hope for us. John Kansas died from pneumonia and complications from his cancer in February 2009 without ever realizing FDA approval or commercialization of his invention. But during its existence, the Kansas Foundation raised over $15 million and officially closed its doors in 2014 announcing it had raised enough funds to bring the technology to human trials. They're expected to begin in Italy later this year. 2009, the Federal Communications Commission mandates that all U.S. television signals be transmitted digitally. The transition was expensive for TV stations and in some cases a hassle for consumers. The station had to buy brand new equipment to transmit in digital and between Fox 66 and WJET, it was well over a million dollars in investment. For our over-the-air viewers, you were forced to buy a television that receives a digital signal or a converter box. The day the switch was flipped from analog to digital, Jet 24 former owner and founder Myron Jones did the honor. It was basically just a flick of a switch, analog was gone. It was fun to ask him to do it. Well, to throw away the technology and it must be done that existed all the way from, you know, 1939 to uh, to the present uh, present time is uh, it's a loss. January 2010, first term President Barack Obama presents his very first State of the Union address. The theme, Rescue, Rebuild and Restore, a new foundation for prosperity. April, Apple CEO Steve Jobs announces the release of the first iPad. Within 90 days, the iPad penetrates 50% of Fortune 100 companies. In November, after 12 hours of deliberation, a jury convicts Marjorie Deal Armstrong on charges of armed bank robbery, conspiracy, and using a destructive device in a crime of violence for her role in the death of pizza delivery man Brian Wells. She's serving life in prison. And here on Jet 24 Action News in late 2010, reporter Kim Thomas joins Sean Lafferty at the anchor desk. On Jet 24, Tracy Tudup and Tom DeVecchio are on the air weekdays with Good Morning Erie. Tracy joined the morning show in 2011 
after arriving at Jet just a few months earlier as a reporter. Sitting next to Tom, who's been here for 20 plus years, is an adventure in itself. I absolutely love being part of the team. I love working with him. We have a blast doing it, and we're really proud to work together, too. Before coming to Jet 24, Tracy could be seen on the air at WQLN as the Education and Outreach Manager. Moving to the TV news business, was definitely a new experience. You know, it's that diverse experience that I think has made me who I am as a professional. I'm very proud to have been part of WQLN and the public broadcasting system. The evening anchor team at Jet 24 has always had great chemistry. Jill McCormick and Sean Lafferty, no exception. Jill began her career more than 25 years ago in the newsroom at CNN, then in Denver, before coming to Erie. She spent 20 years on Erie television before arriving at JET in December 2011. She was our morning show reporter until an opportunity presented itself in 2012 for a spot on the evening anchor desk. It really never was in the realm of possibility for me. So when the opportunity came up, I was so excited to be able to throw my hat in the ring and to try to get the job. And when they offered me the position, it was like a dream come true, really. Jill quickly became part of the family here at JET. 2013, a brand new look for JET 24 Action News. Following months of planning, designing, and building came a new set, branding, and logos. We wanted to rename ourselves using the best of who we were in the past, WJET, JET, and 24, which people have known us forever. So we combined them to JET 24 and kept it with Action News, JET 24 Action News and really made that our platform. With the transition to high definition television, Jet 24 changed everything from hardware to software, news graphics, sonic and visual branding to reinforce what we've always been for you, your news leader and your weather authority. Throughout the 2013 transition, the newscast continued every morning, noon and night. We never skipped a beat even though for a while we didn't have a studio during the transition. What we had referred to as Studio C during our conversion was actually a hallway that we had used some of the graphics, the uh, printed plastic Duratrans from the old set, put those behind the anchors and lit a hallway so that we would have an area from which to do the news while the studio was being built. For the first time in decades, Jet TV had a new logo, Jet 24, presenting a polished new look that will be here for decades to come. The man who started Jet TV in 1966 was Myron Jones, a broadcast engineer by training. His longtime partner, John Kansas, was also a broadcast engineer, once having the title here of Chief Engineer. Well, the man in that role today is Phil Kowalczyk. We call him Phil K. He's been here over two decades, and he's the guy that changed TV forever here moving us from analog to digital, a huge project. Lots of time, lots of equipment, lots of money. It's not something you just quickly do. It takes a lot of effort and planning and work to get us on the air. It's just incredible how far things have come in the last you know, 28 years. It was really exciting, uh, especially you know at home, see it in HD finally. For 50 years, every newscast on Jet 24 has ended with sports. It doesn't matter who's at the sports desk. Doug Davis in the 60s and 70s, John Evans, Mike Gallagher, or Brian Duffy in the 80s and 90s, or Scott Wadiga and Luke Simons in the new millennium, sports has always come last. So on this very last report on Jet 24's 50th anniversary, it's about time we feature the hardest working guy in Erie television. Jet 24 Sports Director Craig Smiley. Good evening. Let's talk sports. It may be five The Cleveland away, native and Ohio University grad came to Jet 24 in 2007. He's covered every major local sporting event since. You cannot ask for a better place to be a sports reporter, sports anchor. It has the perfect mix of professional sports mixed with college sports and high school athletics. All week long, Smiley shoots the games, interviews the players, writes the stories, and anchors the sports cast. And when you have a weekend off, Craig hits the road again to cover the big games. It's pretty much the best of everything. I've gotten the chance to work with some of the biggest names in sports as well as working all the way down to the high school level and getting to tell the stories of high school kids every single day. Hey Erie, Trino Orlando here. Remember me? I work at NBC5 in Chicago now, but from 2006 to 2008, I anchored Good Morning Erie and Action News 24 at noon. 
Jet TV will always hold a special place in my heart because not only was it my first job in TV news, but it was also the first time in my life I had the pleasure of setting my alarm clock for 2.30 in the morning. Thanks for the experience and also the memories, Jet TV. Happy 50th anniversary. It has been quite an experience looking back on the history of JET and it's difficult to highlight everyone who did contribute to that history, but we do want to thank everyone past and present, all the employees who contributed to JET's 50 years of broadcasting excellence. Absolutely, Jill. It has been a long, long list of very talented people over the years. You know, this past year of 50 years and 50 weeks, so much fun to be a part of. Of course, we also want to thank you, our viewers, for sharing in the celebration with us. We look forward to another 50 years of JET 24 and being your news leader. Good night.